It's a, it's a privilege to be asked to uh, testify of God's grace um, on this church. Um, the hard part is, is cutting out all of the, all of the testimony. Um, what was appealing, by the way, I'm Scott Maxwell. If you don't know who I am, I'm Scott Maxwell. I was asked to be a pastor here in December of 2003. And what was appealing about this church to me in 2003 is what is still appealing to me in 2021, and that is um, the God of this church, um, who purchased this church with his blood, with the blood of his son. What was appealing back then in 2003 was um, God's love for this church when it was unlovely in the eyes of men. And what was appealing back then was God's grace and his favor on this church when man had no favor to show it at all. And what was appealing about this church back then was God's faithfulness when man's unfaithfulness looked like it ruined everything. And what was appealing back then was God's trustworthiness when man could not be counted on. In those earlier days, God stood out in stark contrast to us all, and that was appealing. The more I got to know this church and what God was doing in it, um, all I could think and all that my wife could think was that we just wanted to be a part of this church family, no matter what God was going to do with it. I wanted to see. I, I wanted to be an eyewitness. I wanted to be in the front row to see what God was going to do next in all of his love and grace and faithfulness. I wanted to experience together with you the uh, trustworthiness of God. Young men and young women, uh, brand new believers, uh, single, maybe newly married at best, who were saddened by the events that preceded ran to put their fingers in the dike to stop the leaks and we quickly ran out of fingers and it kept leaking and it was truly amazing. If we survived those early days, there would be only one explanation and, and we knew that that explanation was God. So that was really um, a great, great moment. It was a privilege to be alongside um, everybody who did that. It was also a unique opportunity for us uh, because you at the beginning had seen quick and exciting numerical growth only to watch it quickly evaporate just as fast. And that's a unique moment in our history to be able to then just open our Bibles and put our heads down and plod just one day at a time. And so we did that. And we grew spiritually, and we grew steadily, and we grew together as we made the God of the Word our highest pursuit and our chiefest joy. And this church has not really ever really experienced fast, flashy growth, but we have been enriched deeply by God's sure and steady faithfulness in our lives, his grace and his love. Um, making it to year 20 as a church means that we have walked through so many different seasons of life together. And through each one of those different seasons, um, God's grace has been on display towards us. Um, many of you went from singleness to married life and God's grace was on display. And then you went from being married to becoming parents and God's faithfulness and trustworthiness was on display. As the years passed, you've begun to go from noisy, active homes to empty nests and God's faithfulness is faithful to you and as our children get married, um, God's grace is on display through us. And um, as we become grandparents, God's grace is on display. As we have gotten sick together and cared for one another, 
God's grace has been on display. As we've grown older and we've begun to lose our parents, God's faithfulness upholds us. And when we've lost our spouses and children earlier than we would have imagined, God's grace is on display. As we rented facilities from schools and churches, God's favor was on us. And when we purchased this property, as Tom said, God's grace was at work years before we ever bought it. When we sent gospel servants to tribal peoples at the ends of the earth in PNG so that those tribal people could be around the throne one day, God's grace was on display. As we train men to be pastors and elders in church, um, God's grace is on display. As we've labored to shepherd our own hearts to God through the word of God, to know him, to love him, to fear him, the God of all grace has blessed that in our lives together. And we've sinned against each other. And we have failed one another. And we are a flawed family. And God's grace is greater than all of our sin. This is a, a church family that, that I want to experience these seasons of life in. And I, I think I only want to encourage you, experience those seasons of life with this church family if you haven't already. And it, it might have felt at one point earlier in our history that we were held together by shoestrings and duct tape, a lot of duct tape, but we weren't. We weren't. We were, we were held up and we were held together by the hands of the God of endless grace. Um, his faithfulness and his love and his trustworthiness supported us. And now that we're, we're 20 years older as a church, a little more mature, it would be an error to think that we're secure primarily because, well, we've just grown up and we've matured spiritually. But the truth is we are not held together today any less by God's grace than in those earlier days. And it is a privilege beyond words to just be a part of this church family. Um, if it's okay, I would like to maybe give you a charge. A charge to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart. To trust him without reservation and without any hesitation. And to seek him in his word and seek him through prayer daily. To never, ever graduate from the gospel. To confess and forsake your sin quickly and thoroughly. And to entrust your family to him. Don't, don't try to control your family. Just open your hand and entrust him and trust them to him. And, and don't be afraid of trials and don't be afraid of losses and don't be afraid of the revealing of your own weaknesses in those trials. Because God will tenderly meet you in ways that you never imagined. And love each other. And be patient with each other. Be gracious to each other. Warn each other. And be quick to forgive. And long for and pray for and labor for the salvation of the sinners around you and do all of this side by side. Let me pray for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we have over the years and through all of these different seasons of life, we have tested your grace and only found your grace to be powerfully sufficient for everything we need. And over the years, we have tested your faithfulness and we have only found you to never be far away, but to always be near, always watching. Over the years, Lord, we have tested your love and we have found it to be bottomless. 
And over the years, we have tested your trustworthiness, and we have found it to be even more solid than we could have imagined. And so, Lord, I I don't even ask today for us that you would sustain us for another 20 years, but we just ask that you would sustain us today and meet each one of us where we are at today. And would you please just reveal again to each one of us yourself. Reveal your son. Draw out of us the worship that is due to your great name. And we ask it in your son's name. Amen.